Hi guys, you're early, you're early. <sighs> okay, so we're early. Can you guys hear my dryer in the background? Somebody tell me. Um, Aisha, you made it. <laughs> um, if you can hear my dryer, tell me so I can turn it off. Um, we're still early. We still have four minutes, so we're going to let people get in here. Okay, you can't hear it good. Um, and then I'm going to pull up the, um, so I can see what you guys are saying closer. Chloe, I hope, Chloe McNeil, I hope I said your name right. I'm glad you finally caught one, too. Um... Why is it always so hard for me to, one of these days, I'm going to upgrade my, um, my live situation so that I can do it, um, from my actual camera instead of my phone, but I have to get software for that and it's kind of expensive. So, um... All right, so we got three minutes, and I have the chat pulled up here. Did y'all bring any tea to sip on? Yes, welcome to my first timers. Hey, Kim. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> it's not incense. It's my tea. My tea is uh, cooling off. Uh, <laughs> see, we got to get beat. Well, Ashley, I'm sorry. I did get beat. Um, yeah, I wanted to, the last couple times I came, well, no, I got beat for, um, was I not beat for um, Tiana and Allison? I feel like I had on makeup then. No? I think I did. Anyway, I didn't feel like coming to y'all looking busted tonight. Plus, it's Friday. Depending on, some of you guys may know here in Texas, we're under um, Stormwatch Hurricane Harvey, I think. Um, Austin should be okay. We're going to get a lot of rain, but, um, and some areas may flood. We do have some flood zones here, but if it's safe to go out, I'm probably going to step out with my friends. Probably. <laughs> so yeah, I did, um, put a little bit of makeup on, get a little beat for you guys for this tea time. So, oh, actually I was beat for Allison, not Tiana. Okay. Thank you. I couldn't remember what, if I had makeup on. It really depended on what, depended on what I had going on during the day that um, I was beat. But anyway, right, Aisha, I'm going out on the night that it's supposed to storm. I don't know. I might just end up just going to dinner. Um, I don't think I'll be in any, um, <laughs> all right, I'm dressed. We can start now. <laughs> We got one more minute, and then I think I'm going to give people um, maybe like two minutes to get in here. Um, I did tweet it, so we can keep this small talk going. Um, oh, Lord. <laughs> Some of y'all are just ready to go for it. <laughs> Oh man, I Ashley, Seely, Seely's pants. Your name is Ashley, right? I don't want to keep saying that, and I'm not saying. I feel like your name is Ashley. Um, I stay out of the comment section, so I'm aware. I'm getting see. I'm getting started without even <laughs> letting everybody get here. All right, it's six o'clock, so we're just. I'm gonna just go ahead and get into it. Um, I let me finish answering that question. I do not. Um, I'm not in the comment sections of like the flow tracks, 
the track and field news, the, you just have to stay away from those things. Um, so if, I hope you kind of understand that. So I really don't know much of what the response is to my blog, but hearing that Ato and Tiana have my back, I certainly appreciate it. Um, and it wasn't one to, let me just get right into it. I wrote the blog because, um, number one, I was inspired by Tiana's blog and her truth. And she did it in a way that it was very artsy. I was like, go ahead, girl. Like, I thought I was reading a poem, you know? Um, so I thought that was dope, which also kind of made it intimidating to write after that. But um, she told a beautiful story. And it wasn't, I didn't feel like it was to... Um, attack any of the girls, which I also made very clear in my blog that that was not my intention at all. In fact, I was proud of all four girls who ran, um, but the issue is more so with the process and how we were treated along that process. Um, and that's that, like it wasn't to bash USATF. I don't have a problem with USATF. I love USATF um, and I do intend to go through the proper channels to voice the very things and more. I didn't share everything because like I said, everything isn't meant to be shared on this platform or, you know, keep some stuff for kitchen table talk. Um, but I do intend to, you know, follow this all the way through in terms of what, whatever part I can play in making Team USA better. We're great, but there's always room for improvement. And, um, you know, for me, I think um, treating your athletes with respect definitely has to be at the top of the list. Um, and that's that. Um, so, so yeah, um, I wanted to say thank you to you guys, everyone, all of my teacups. I think I, I like the teacups. I think I'm going to stick with that. That were <laughs> reaching up to, um, reaching out, sorry you know, to see where I was. Some of you, I realized, thought I was maybe hurt. Um, and I can understand where that confusion came from because a lot of people did expect to see me out there. And so I really, really appreciate you guys' heartfelt words, you guys' concern that I'm healthy, that I'm okay, um, and that you missed me. You know, <laughs> I um, I'm, it's, it warms my heart. Um, what else do I want to say? I knew I should have prepared notes for this. Um, um, Tanette Ingram, yes, we can take a vote. Maybe I will, um, I'll go back and look at this chat. So put your votes in here, like teacups or your nominations rather. And then um, maybe I'll put a poll on Twitter and we do that. Does that work? I like teacups though. <laughs> um, okay. Start with my overall feelings about London 2017 with the metal upgrade and family being back in London. Thanks, Aisha. That is a great starting point. Um, the metal ceremony. I didn't get to address this myself. I did um, have Fran speak a little bit about her experience because Fran was upgraded twice. She was upgraded for... Um, I believe it was 2011, the individual 400, and then again, 13 with us for the 4x4. Four four. Um, it's still one, it's still an experience that it's, it's, I'm still kind of like, I don't know how to feel about it, if I'm honest. And I don't know how to feel about it because it's a negative situation that we're now trying to make into a positive. And, um, so I'm one to say, you know, we should celebrate the small victories. And I think that this is, while a victory that we are making in our sport, um, for us to be upgraded, um, it's a reminder that there is this stain on our sport. Um, and I think that it's oftentimes one of the things that I try to avoid speaking on because I do think that it's a fine line of my kitchen table talk rule here. Um, and what I'm saying, what I'm saying that I avoid talking about is doping in our sport. Um, because for me, the issue that I have is that it is prevalent in our sport. It is something that um, 
I wake up every day and I know, you know, there are people that are cheating, but there are also people in every sport that's cheating. And one of the things that is disheartening to me is that it seems to be a narrative that keeps coming up over and over and over and over and over again in our sport. And um, I think that I am a part of the culture that wants to bring fans into the sport, bring more sponsors into the sport. And I think that when we, the athlete, show that we don't have faith in our own sport, how can we then expect sponsors and fans to have faith in something that we don't have faith in? So that's why this is something that's tricky for me to talk about because it's, it's I'm not trying to avoid the truth. Um, I mean, it's the truth, but it's a fine line for me. I don't, I don't know how to, how, you know, how do we address this? How do we, I don't want it to be, put it this way. We know it's prevalent in other sports and we'll hear about it in other sports, but we hear about it and it's gone like that. Track and field, it's an ongoing narrative and it's one that we cannot get away from. And um, so that that's, that's sort of my issue with that conversation. So um, how it felt to stand atop the podium, hear the national anthem in my honor, definitely blessing, definitely something I was grateful for. Um, but it's still hard to come to terms with, you know, what happened and, you know, that this is something that is an ongoing problem in our sport. And I mean, it's, it's, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's, it's great to know that the efforts are being made to clean up the sport, but I would love for our narrative to stay more around positive stories than this. Um, about my family being there, I was ecstatic. Um, you guys should know by now that I am, I'm a family girl. Like family is everything to me. So for me to be able to have my mom there, first of all, this is my mom's first time back to London in 41 years. I didn't even realize it was that long. I wanted, of course, I wish I could have taken, taken her in 2012 for the games, but I didn't make that team. So um, I was able to bring her this time. And this time my brother was there, my grandparents, and my mom's two brothers so my uncle and my uncle sorry and um one of my uncle's girlfriends so it was so cool that we got to visit the homes that they grew up in um my mom was ex so excited to eat fish and chips she probably had fish and chips for every meal while she was there fish and chips and bonbons <laughs> um so i mean that was just cool to to see that and see that through um their eyes. Like there was so much that I didn't get to show in the vlog that I did post, but just hearing them talk about like, remember we you used to park here? And my mom was showing me um, her bedroom window that she used to sit in like this bay window and read all day. Um, that, it was cool to me. Um, and I, I, one of the things that I've always said about like, I'm excited that my lineage is like all over the place, London, Jamaica, Trinidad, Grenada. And I look forward to being able to take my kids around the world to show them like, hey, you have roots here, you have roots there. So that that was really, really exciting for me. So London wasn't so bad after all. I came home with two gold medals and memories forever with my family. Um, okay. I feel like I'm gonna have ended up at Excuse me, I'm gonna have ended up skipping a lot of questions because I was talking so much and I saw this going down. Um, uh, okay, Ashley, do you get compensated for helping out the Rila? Yes, all six members get um, a portion of the prize money. So yes, everyone is compensated. Everyone comes home with a medal. So, um, Aisha, it's I think it's because the punishment is different in other sports. Super Bowl rings or World Series championships aren't taken away. This is true, Aisha. It's 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 made into a very big deal, and it is a big deal in our sport. But um, I think it's too much a part of the the narrative. The narrative, sorry. Um. 
um, P model one. Uh oh, it went away that quickly. Um, but you asked, yeah, Aisha mentioned, I was just going to say, you asked about how we felt about the treatment of Jasmine. And I did, Ju Jasmine, Justin, and I did address that in my tea time with um, Tiana. If there was a 300 meter, Sarah, Sarah Cheney, hope I said that right. If there was a 300 meter race in the Olympics, would you run it instead of the 400? I'd give it a stab. Why not? <laughs> um, okay. Sherwood, Sherwood 991, you make a very good point. Um, Furthermore, there are some people who intentionally cheat for which there is no excuse, but there are others who unwittingly fail the test. Both are, however, painted with the same brush. Very true. And um, for those of you who don't know, we could test positive for taking the wrong cold medicine. There's cold medicines that have um, mild stimulants in them. And so imagine, you know, being over in Germany and you come down with this cold and you want to take medicine. And I've, I've been in these instances. I think there was one instance actually where I had an allergic reaction in my eye. My eye was just like swelling up, itchy, puffy. And I remember I went through loops and bounds just to find an eye drop. And I was like verifying with doctors, like, is this okay? Because the slightest thing and we can test positive and, and you're, it's, the general public reads the headline that someone tested positive, but they don't read further to see that it was a cold medicine or it was a, you're lumped in that category with that person who did it intentionally. So very fair point. Um, Actinite viewer, I hope I said that right. Why are you doing this blogging? I love it, but you have to really be comfortable doing it, right? Absolutely. Um, and it's taken some time. I'm still getting there with the comfort level of, um, you know, sharing things with you guys, i.e. that blog that I wrote. <laughs> I, that is so not my, um, it was me be, I, I really had to step out of myself for that one. Um, because I, I, I've said it over and over and over again, and I know a lot of you don't agree with it, but I am by nature an introvert. I do not like controversy. I do not like um, conflict. So um, it, it is something that I'm, I'm learning to become more comfortable with because I do realize that I have a voice and I do realize that um, if I wanna have an impact on others, you know, there's certain ways to do that. and. I feel like YouTube is one of the ways to do that and, you know, showing, sharing a little bit about myself. I read a comment where someone said before my YouTube channel, they thought I was arrogant. Now they don't feel that way. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as well as I also think of, you know, myself 10 years ago when I made my first senior team and there were things that I didn't know that I wish someone would have taken me under their wing. And I did have people who did, but you know, to let me know that, you know, hey, these are the kind of things that I'll end up going through or things I need to look out for. Um, and then the high schooler and the junior high schooler, I went through all of those phases too. So um, it's about me thinking about younger Natasha and, you know, what I think other folks might want to know, as well as you guys giving me the feedback of what you want to know. Um, I feel like I'm missing. Yes, I saw this question a couple of times. I will be, Tiana, what are you exactly in? Gosh, these comments are moving too fast. I will be competing in Brussels. I leave on Monday. Brussels is the Diamond League final for the 400. I believe right now I'm in second place. So I'm in, in good position to, you know, go out there and, and rock and roll. So I'm excited about um, this last meet coming up and going out and ending my season with a bang. Um. The other day you posted on IG story, you were writing about some struggles. Could you comment on that? I was referring to the blog that I was, that I just published. That was 
hard, it was a struggle for me to write that. <laughs> like, um, and it was a struggle because I wanted the tone and I wanted it to be clear. I keep emphasizing that this is my truth. This is not, I'm not anything against anyone. It's just my truth about what my experience was. Um, Brooklyn's fine. <laughs> Are you worried that it's going to cause friction within your peers by writing your blog? I hope not. Um, I've spoken to one of the ladies since writing my blog and I think that I made it very clear and I said it to the ladies that night, like you guys did an awesome job. I know that they didn't make the decision. I know that this wasn't a them against Natasha thing. And that's what, why I started the, the blog off the way that I did that. Let's be clear here. They ran fast. They ran amazing. This is not against them. I just wish that I was given a fair shot at running in the final. I feel as though it wasn't fair how I was treated, what I was told, and then something else happened. Um, you know, even if after the fact, I would have been pulled aside and say, hey, Natasha, I know this is the conversation that we had, but this is what happened. I'm thinking about going in this direction rather than having found out at the track on the day of the final, I would still be hurt. I would still be disappointed but I could at least respect the decision a little bit more that way. So again, my issue is not with the ladies. I can't, uh, facts are facts. I can't fight a good race. <laughs> I can't fight, like they did an awesome job, but I felt that, you know, Orin could have been a little bit clearer. Um, <laughs> Aisha, I'm not about to play with you. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I would have liked to have help. I know that when I'm reading the questions, I'm kind of not engaged. So just bear with me. Um, Sherwood, you're making Sherwood 991. You're making some very valid points. Um, and I, yes, salute to Tiana for um, sharing her truth and inspiring me to share mine, giving me the courage <laughs> to do the same. <laughs> um, Tiana, will you be in Brussels? If, if Tiana's in Brussels, I don't see why not. I, you guys, we give the people what they want. <laughs> um, I'm trying to scroll back up because I feel like I've missed some questions up top here. Um, what's up Holmes? Did you know there's Nando's in DC and Boston too? I think I didn't know that there's one in Boston, but I did know that there's, or I found out that there's one in DC and I did go to the Nando's in DC. Um, Eugene Wilson, absolutely. I would run in track town USA for team New York all day, every day. All day, every day. Okay, I think sibling challenge with Justin. I think that would be dope. I'll see if he'll if he'll be up to it. My brother likes to act like he's shy sometimes, or like I'm not a cool big sister. I think I'm pretty cool, but you know, he's 19, so. <laughs> oh man. Okay, we'll figure it out, Tiana. We're gonna make it happen anyway. So tea time coming up with Tiana in Brussels. Um, Anton the singer, I'm going to need you to go read Tiana's blog to find out why she did not run the 4x1 in London. Um, I do, we do, Lucio, we do need a whole production team for Tea Time. We're working on it though. We're working on it. Um, Devante Malachi, I saw this question a few times. What are my plans for next season? 
Um, for those that don't know, next season is what we call an off year. And by that, we mean we don't have a major championship um, in the outdoor season. So there is a world indoors, which will be in Birmingham, 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 <laughs> UK, Great Britain. Um, so there is that. But then for the outdoor season, there is no um, major championship. But we will still have our national championship, as I believe the rest of the countries do as well. And actually, do the Commonwealth countries have Commonwealth games and stuff? I think they have major championships. Um, and I believe we maybe have the Pan Am games or something like that. But um, I still plan on competing. Um, I actually have um, expressed to my coach that I would like to run some more 200s. So I'm hoping to do a lot of sprinting next year. Um, of course, I'll definitely be running the quarter, but I'm hoping to run some more 200s than 400s next year since it is an off year and I can kind of, you know, play around with my focus a little bit. And there is the Diamond League series. So that's another thing to keep in mind um, that, you know, we will be competing in the Diamond League. So, yeah, so we're still training. We're still competing. We just don't have the major championship at the end of the year. Um, okay. Yes, Commonwealth Games is next year. Thank you. Um, Indiana Douglas, have I ever considered doing tea time with non-American athletes? I actually had Wade Van Niekirk booked, but with his double duty, um, in London, it just, the schedules just got way crazy. Um, you guys, you should know that between three rounds of each event and then press and he was just being tugged in every which way. Um, so I'm definitely hoping to reschedule tea time with him. I'm actually going to South Africa next month on vacation. So, um, I don't know. I'll see, of course it's, It'll, it'll be determined by if I'm even close to where he lives. I don't know where in South Africa he lives, um, but if we can make it happen while I'm there, great. If not, we'll have to wait till next season. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely down. I had um, TT, <laughs> Tynia Gaylor on here from the Bahamas, one of my training partners. Um, I'm actually looking to have other sports on tea time too. Um, I think it would be great to kind of have some cross table conversations about the differences in our sports and some of our experiences. Um, because naturally I have friends that play other sports and it's a natural conversation for us. So I think it would be cool to have that on um, tea time as well. So yeah, other countries and, oh, he lives in Joburg. Okay, so we'll, maybe I can make that happen. I'll reach out to him and see. Benjamin Porter, I agree. I agree. Um, Vera C, how do athletes get selected to compete in indoor worlds? For Team USA, our process is we have an indoor nationals. And um, first and foremost, you, you, I think we just have the A standard now. Once upon a time, there used to be the A and the B standard. But I believe they just narrowed it down to the A standard. You have to hit the A standard. And by standard, I mean the standard that the IAAF sets to even qualify to compete in the World Indoor Championships. And then you then have to place in the top two. Um, unlike outdoors, it is the top two that go to um, the World Indoors. And then, of course, you have the relay pool, which is usually top six. Um, Thanks, Kim. No more B standard, just the A. <laughs> Donald Johnson, are you kidding me? Would I beat Ajay in the 800? Heck no. She's the American record holder. I probably I probably could, heck, well, I could rabbit her through about 600. And then I don't even think I could make it to six, maybe five. <laughs> and then she has the rest of it. Um, Brooklyn's fine again. Um, I definitely thought about getting Sonya on here. Um, Sonia and I do live in the same city. She just had little Ducey, so she is um, enjoying that. So I think it would be dope to get her on here and maybe talk about life after sport and mommyhood. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what she's she's a busy woman. And then now with little Ducey, 
I'm sure um, she's hella busy. Um, Daryl need of course, you guys are all throwing out names. That, yeah, I would love to have them on here. Um, <laughs> so active night viewer, would you be Ajay's rabbit to help her get the world record? So I don't know if you guys know, but those rabbits actually make a very good living. They get paid very well to be a rabbit. So if they ask me to rabbit anyone <laughs> to the world record, you know, they're getting a nice bonus. I would absolutely do it. Yes. Ajay, whoever, I got you. <laughs> oh man Ashley thank you I believe you're talking about the Players Tribune article um, um, and to the singer how do I feel about her baby Sonia baby uh, what are you what are you asking me like that's goals like she's married with a child like that's what's up for her many blessings to her um, um, Connor McBride would you ever wear a body cam while running I've actually been asked to wear one before um and I know, um, I mean, let me not say a hard no. I would have to practice with it first to make sure that it wouldn't be a distraction. But um, I know me. Sorry about that. Someone really just called me. Um, um, goodness, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought just like that. <laughs> um, oh, body camera. Thank you. <laughs> I know because of all of the, yes, Vera, very rude. Because of all of this that I run in that like really is really not all of this. Um, when I run, like everything down to my spikes, like I, I almost want to feel barefoot. I don't want to feel anything. Um, I would have to be sure that the camera would not get in any way, any like I, I would have to, I would have to, I would have to practice with that before. But my my first instinct is to say no, no. Um. Tiana, exactly. I, I don't even wear socks in my spikes. Like, I need to feel barefoot. Um, we've done the fantasy four by four question in previous tea times. Donald Johnson, how long will you compete? Um, my goal is to make it to the 2020 Olympics and then I will for sure retire after that. <laughs> like that's, so three years from now, um, yeah. Um, Natalie Ramirez, shout out. <laughs> Uh-oh, I see a long, let me see what this comment says. I spent $800 on tea two years ago, but now I cut it down. I'm a southern you overdose on tea because I'm working on the 109 language program. Um, I, no, <laughs> I, uh, I drink a lot of water. Um, in fact, I don't drink juice unless it's, um, pressed juice. Um, so, uh, so like fresh juice. So I don't do like soda and unless it's the off season, you know, then that's a little different, but I only drink water, coffee and tea. 
So I honestly feel like I drink so much water that it flushes out um, the tea and coffee. So no, I don't feel like I've ever overdosed on, um, yeah, tea. <laughs> conspiracy hmm. Eugene Wilson I am thinking about doing TV I'm, I'm this you know I was hoping to um, impart something on you guys through this YouTube experience but I am learning that um, I could I could see myself doing TV after track uh, whether that be like something like Lewis Johnson being down on the field with the athletes and engaging with them there or up in the booth. I don't know. That's a lot of pressure to call those races. Like, you guys don't realize, like, sometimes I hear um, or I see people, like, going in on some of the commentators. And I get it. You, you have to be knowledgeable about the people out there on the track. But they do have a script. They do have, um, you know, what production tells them, you know, this is the person that we're going to focus on. This is the narrative. And then when things don't go according to that that script, you got to think on your feet and come up with, you know, the changes. <laughs> and it, it, that's a lot of pressure to do that, like, live. So, um, yeah. But I definitely can see myself doing some sort of broadcast. I would love to, um, I've talked about finding a way to bring a little bit more entertainment to um, broadcast in track in terms of, bringing more of the athletes' personalities out. I feel like, I've said this over and over and over again, that you guys see us like we're in the zone, we're serious, and we have to be that way. But then, um, you know, I think there's room to kind of bring, you know, people's personalities out and show that, you know, we like to have a little bit of fun too. So. <sighs> <laughs> Magic Waffle, you were really smooth in the would you rather. Aisha, thank you. I agree. A weekly series. Um, How do I, Edmund and D Jr., how do you feel about the growth that countries such as South Africa and Botswana are showing on 200, 400 meter? I mean, 800 meter level. I, I think it's the sport. I think... um. You know, every now and again, or not every now and again, the sport has cycles. So you're going to find talent from different places around the world. I just, I think it's a part of the sport, man. Um. <laughs> uh, what's up, Holmes? I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, they let me do some stuff. Um, they don't let me do takeovers, but USATF is definitely paying attention to what I'm doing. So... <laughs> They, they let me, they, get, they actually give me some pointers and by USATF, let me be a little bit more specific, their media department, they give me some pointers on how to do this whole thing too. So um, they're, they're watching me. <laughs> um, Shari S, what's the craziest or shadiest thing you heard a commentator say about you when re-watching a race? I don't really take those comments too personally um so i have to think about it i have to think about it oh one that like hit me here was um recently um because of the whole you know russia situation i was bumped up to fourth from um the world championships in 2013 so i placed fifth but there was a russian who placed second or third um so it naturally moved us up um so i think it was the rome race and the commentator um mentioned um fourth at the rio olympics fourth at 2013 world championships and i was like oh he called me the nearly athlete that what it was he said that he said the nearly athlete fourth at rio and fourth at in moscow and i was like oh that like stung but i mean 
I I didn't take it personally because I just felt like he's trying to be fancy with his words. Like I just did it and I know him. I don't remember. Oh gosh, what is his name? It's the British guy. I see him all the time on the road. So when I saw him, I was like, the nearly athlete, like I called him out on it, but I mean, he's doing his job. I'm <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not in my feelings about it because yeah, nearly. <laughs> Thank you, Tiana. He was using superlatives. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't Phil. Um, Anton, the singer. I do plan on, I'm, and I'm hoping I can do it before I leave um, on Monday. I do plan on um, doing some sort of giveaway because I have a ton of USA stuff that I just, I, I'm about to burst out of this little apartment that I live in. So I have a ton of USA stuff that I'm, I'm going to do some sort of giveaway with, um, as well as just give away some autographs. If you guys want autographs, um, I'll post something on Instagram when I do um, the uh, the giveaway. And if this one's going to be easy. It's not even, I'm just trying to get rid of stuff, y'all. <laughs> um, I'm St. Louis. I'm late, but I like what you're wearing. Is it designer? Thank you. And no, it is Zara. It is a sweater from Zara. Thank you. <laughs> uh, oh my God, the Cory Carter challenge. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> I would have to be standing up. I'm going to have to do that like <laughs> at practice one day. Have somebody film it for me because you can't even see me wave. And then you got to, you know, you got to rock back and forth. Like, Corey was in a zone, honey. Obviously, it paid off. <laughs> um, I do save most of my race bibs, not all of them, but a good bit of them. Um, and in instances where, you know, sometimes fans ask for our bibs. So if we have like two, I try to keep at least one. Um, yeah. Beehive. Yes, I did watch the last episode of Power. Man, man, man. Um, I do Sundus. I, I don't want to. I don't want to butcher your last name. Do you consider the eight hundred meter a sprint? I think the way these girls are running it now, not even the girls, the way they're running it now. Period. Men and women is the sprint. Like <laughs> they take out and like the men, like they run their last lap in like forty nine seconds. Like, like it's a sprint. It is a sprint. Okay, I think I am, uh-oh, we don't know. <laughs> yes, I was giving y'all the side eye. I'm going with Floyd for the fight. I just hope that this fight is exciting because I'm going to be honest. The uh, last couple fights, I was just kind of like, I wanted to see more. But Floyd is just, he's just in a category of his own, in a class of his own. Coaches, WD0, what do you mean by another relationship, T? Like, why am I single? You want to know why I'm still single? <laughs> Shady, huh? <laughs> um, have I ever done any distance, uh, not distance, field events, sorry. Nope, never tried any, which is interesting because my mom did the jumps. My mom did the long jump, so I'm not sure why I didn't try at least the long jump, but no. I just started sprinting and stuck to that. Oh my lord. You guys with these Nathaniel questions. Like, what about them? So, do y'all understand something? Let me put this out there. I am 31, <laughs> and I believe Nathaniel is like 
he just got out of college. So what, like 22, 23, maybe? That is a child to me. <laughs> like, y'all need to cut it out. Um, uh, the best Nando's combo, I always get the 10-piece wing medium with chips. Real American, but in Nando's. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would, if Nathaniel wanted to do a um, tea time, for sure. As long as he would answer my questions, like he could, he wouldn't take me serious for the would you rather. Like, I, if if he's not going, no, <laughs> no. Um, I see this question keep coming up about the, um, the officials at track meets. They're, they're all pretty cool. I can't really say that I've had any issues with any over the years. Um, and honestly, most of them are like fans of the sport. There are a few that they're like, good luck, Natasha. And I'm like, are you supposed to be telling me this right now? <laughs> but you know, they tell me all the time, like, it's a joy watching you run. I've been watching you for, and funny enough, a lot of the officials have been around since I was in diapers. Like, so they've seen me come up. Um, so I can't say that I've ever had an issue with um, the officials out there. They're, they're pretty cool to me. I'm also, I'm, I don't do field events. So as long as I don't step on the line, I don't have a reason to have a problem with any of the officials, so. Um, I think lane one would definitely be the worst choice for me in a 400. I would definitely pick lane eight over one. Um, Chanelie eight, I already answered your question about it, about next season not being a championship year. Um, and XO, A, S, M, XO, I did answer the question about Wade Van Niekirk. We're going to try to get him on here next month when I go to, um, South Africa. They do have free refills. Nando's. Nando's is the truth, man. It's like the first. We get off the plane in London and we're like, where's Nando's? Like, where is Nando's right now? Um, Tony is another one that, um, <laughs> let me say two things about Tony. What's crazy about Tony is that he looks exactly like one of my exes. And it's kind of scary because he almost behaves like my ex too. So, um, but yeah, I, I'll get Tony on here, but he, that's another one that he wouldn't, he wouldn't take the, the serious. Like he would be playing the whole time. Man, Sharika almost got that W yesterday. Me and coach were just looking at that um, photo finish today at practice. I was trying to find every which way, like, no, she won. And it was like, I guess if you're saying her chest, Sal her chest being Sally's chest, um, crossed the line first, then fine. But um, yes, Aisha Tony would not answer my question. Adele, Tiana did kill that lame one. <laughs> <laughs> she, she came out them blocks and said, forget y'all. Oh my goodness. Guys, enough with the wig questions. Um, Pierre Williams, what's the craziest thing an athlete has ever said to you while on the start line or at the finish line? Honestly, we don't talk much. Um, if at all at the start line and then after the race you guys remember i run the quarter so nobody's really trying to talk after either so um i, I can't i don't i don't have one of those stories um serena townsend what's my favorite mascara honestly because i wear falsies i don't really get into like um 
let me take that back. I do like, I think it's Maybelline, but it's like, it's that old school one with the green top and the pink uh, bottle. Like, yeah, I love that. But because I wear false lash, uh, strip lashes, um, I don't have to, um, I just, whatever cheapy, or if I get a sample from Sephora, that's what I use. But I do like that um, mascara with the green top and the pink um, bottle. What what happened to Stephen Gardner? Um, and Dr. Nike, um, what's the weirdest slash funniest thing that ever happened to you? Oh, while in London, hmm. And to Ms. Singer, how would you feel if an athlete got boob implants to win a race at the line? Uh, that logic so sounds kind of backwards, but I do know I do know some athletes who have implants and compete just fine with them. I will wait till I retire to get mine though. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about the monkey video? <laughs> okay, we'll talk about Gardner first. Gardner tripped coming out of the blocks in the. Diamond League 400 final. Oh, I missed that. Oh, man. So what happened? Did they disqualify him? He didn't run. Oh, they just ran the race. They didn't call it back. Dang, I don't even have words for that. Those are the things that... Um, Dang, I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know, because I didn't see it. Um, I've certainly been in some instances where I've um, slipped out or there have even been some times where you think they're going to call a race back for whatever reason and they don't. And they it's and it's one of those situations that you just kind of, it happens, man. It happens and it sucks that it would happen in the final for him. Dang. What? <laughs> so I just read a question <laughs> and I was like, excuse me? Why am I so needy? It's my homeboy. Get out of here, Marcus. <laughs> um, Don't say that. I don't think he like purposely, especially if he was up to win the diamond. Why would he know? Um, Scroll back down. <laughs> Bye, Marcus. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, don't um, don't bail on me. So I'm, let me put it out here for my teacups. Marcus is the one. He's just my homeboy. Don't, because y'all be quick to put me in a relationship. <laughs> Marcus is one of my friends that I'm meeting later after I get through with you guys. So he's just on here poking fun. That's all of my friends. Actually, y'all bug Marcus because I asked him to do a video with me. I wanted him to do um, a video um, of like what it's like to be my friend because a lot of people, like that comment about me being arrogant actually kind of inspired me or gave me the idea to do this um, because I can tell you guys what I'm like, but I think it would be cool to kind of do something with like, I like the sibling tag where my brother kind of talks about what I'm like to him. And then I would like to do stuff with my friends. Like, and Marcus is one of my very close friends. So yeah, bug him and tell him to do that. Um, Aaliyah Brown was low key trying to go in on you know, calling me old. She was, but it was cute though. Like <laughs> it was, Honestly, in that conversation, um, and for you guys, I'm kind of like, I'm referring to the conversation on the bus in one of my vlogs where um, some of the team, Aaliyah Brown, Tony McQuay, um, 
Chris Belcher, Chris or Brian, Chris Belcher, y'all help me out. I'm old, auntie old. Um, <laughs> they were, they called me auntie and they were saying that I act, Chris Belcher, yeah, they were saying that I act like a, a old lady. Um, and it was cute to me because um, I, I know the truth. Like some nights I'm in bed by seven, so I'm not mad, but she, she was, she was going in on me. <laughs> Oh my God, I have to get Jason Richardson on here. That one went, it went by really fast, but I did see, oh, there it is, TJ Andres. I gotta get Jason on here, that's that's my boy. So um, when we're in the same city, it might not be live, I might have to tape it, but um, we gonna get Jason on here. Magic waffle. I am an introvert. I am. <laughs> Brooklyn's fine. Yes, I do have male besties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my brother, he was being nice when we were in London. He he was uh Tiana, you would do good on, on YouTube. Um I think uh you would do really good. You express yourself really well. And um, yeah, you, you were spilling some tea on tea time too. So, but I think you would do good on YouTube for sure. Um, Sandus Abdullah, nice way to bring it back to track. I like your question. Do you think track and field is tough as most athletes have to fend for themselves in terms of coaching and promotion? That can be hard. Um, and Speaking for me, myself, I'm a micromanager. And so I do have a publicist. I do have a marketing team, but there are certain things that I just cannot let go control over. Or let me not say I cannot. I'm getting to the point where I realize you can't do everything. Um, but it is important that we tell our, our own stories and um, at least direct that narrative um, around our lives and the image that we want to have and the, um, that sort of thing. But it is hard because we don't, unless you are, um, no, I'm not going to say that. It's an investment. It costs to put your story out there. It costs to be visible. It costs, so it, it, it is something that you have to be willing to make that sacrifice and that investment. Um, so it can become challenging there. Eugene Wilson, I would definitely do um, some high school, college. So I would love to have Sydney on here. Sydney was at Sydney McLaughlin. Sydney was um, one of my roommates in Rio, and she's a sweetheart. She's a little fireball. I like her. Maybe she'll teach me how to juggle. <laughs> um, I I got lucky and I had my own room in London. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Anton the Singer. Um, sorry, I had to walk right by you. Sometimes we're on a mission. Um, let me scroll back up. When was the last time, Bhavan Chablau? When was the last time you visited Trinidad? Do you plan on going to Carnival in the future? I think 2012 was the last time I've been to Trinidad and I do plan on going to Carnival. I actually was supposed to go last year or this year rather, sorry. Um, but yeah, dropped the ball. Me and Felicia George were supposed to go along with some other friends, my family. Um, but I dropped the ball in getting my costume because of course, if you go to Trinidad Carnival, you have to play Mass with Tribe. So um, definitely plan on going to um, 
carnival one day. I don't know if I'll be able to go this year because it is an indoor world championship year and my mother has already put the pressure on me to make the Birmingham team. <laughs> so maybe next year, next year as in 2019. Brian Young, you're welcome. That's awesome. I, I love when I can do stuff like that. Um, <laughs> Simone Ferreira, when you watch a short, exciting race, are you able to stay sitting down? I can't. No. If you saw the vlog um, where we were watching um, Tori's final, the 100 final, like, we were all, like, we dip at the line with her. We, we no, even um, some of the distance races, like, when you start getting down towards the end, like, Mo, Mo Farah, the, um, was it the 10K that was first? Or the five? Whatever the first race was, um, he played with our hearts. Like, I was just like, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I couldn't stay in my seat. So, for all of the races, if it's exciting, I'm probably getting out of my seat. I'm probably going to dip at the line with you. Like, yeah. I I have visited Tobago quite a bit. Um, actually, when I was younger, I went to Trinidad every summer, and we would always spend at least a week or two in Tobago. Um, Eric Kennard is okay. He did... Um, he did withdraw from um, the World Championships due to injury, but he is working to get healthy and get back on the track and get ready for next season. Ivy King, yes, my father is from Jamaica. Um, <laughs> answer the Trini questions with my Trini accent. Uh, that's That's hard. Um, my father is from Westmoreland and Jamaica also is another place that I visited a lot as a child. Um, and so I've, I've been to Westmoreland, I've been to Kingston, I've been to Mobe. Bay. Um, yeah, my Jamaican accent is horrible. I don't use that accent very much. So, um, when I was younger, I used to try to speak it more, but now because I don't use it as much, I try to stay away from it. Um, yeah, the Trini accent comes out when I um, speak to my my family. It does. <laughs> my favorite Jamaican dish would be jerk chicken with rice and peas with oxtail gravy on rice and some fried plantain. Um, I do not have a British accent. <laughs> None whatsoever. Um, all right, let's go back up. We're going to um, start wrapping this up soon. So if you guys want to ask any more track-related questions or anything, um, going back to the vlog, the, the blog, blog, blog. <laughs> Do you ever read your own wiki? No, should I? Is there something on there that I need to go read? <laughs> Have you ever had to use the bathroom while at the starting line or during the race? While at the start starting line, yes. But once the gun goes off, you kind of forget about it. Um, my wiki is incorrect. Uh-oh. Man, you guys are moving fast. Wait a minute. I, as of now, I'm not planning on going to Deca Nation. No. Um, are you considering working with the USATF coaching squad, especially the relay team? I don't necessarily have aspirations to be a coach. So it's not something that I ever thought about. Um, I think this is a... a an example of how much responsibility goes into being a coach. And I don't know that, um, I don't know that I have the patience for it. Although 
I've been told that I seem to have a, a knack for it in terms of, um, you know, helping out here and there. Um, so like I said earlier, I intend to do my part in terms of, um, you know, making sure that the athlete's um, best interest is kept at the center, but I don't know that I would ever want to coach or coach the relays at that. Um, Indiana Douglas, do you participate in any mentoring program for young girls? So actually I am creating my own mentoring program um, and the rollout will be coming very soon. And what is it called? Tea time with Tasha. <laughs> so um, we have our first stop coming up October 28th in New York. And I basically plan on um, doing some self-love and self-esteem, self-worth um, seminars, or I don't want to call it seminars because I don't want it to be, it's not going to be, um, it's going to be empowering for the ladies that attend, put it that way. So look out for, for that rollout when that gets going, but I'm looking forward to making it a national tour um, and something that I do for a while with the young ladies. Um, it's, again, me thinking about um, young Natasha and the things that I wish that I would have had an influencer come back and pour into me. Um, just thinking about some of the things that I went through as a teenager or even as a teenage athlete that, you know, just to let the girls know you're, you're not alone, you know, Auntie Tasha is here and there will be other female athletes there to also speak to their experiences through sport, as well as the doors that have been opened through sport. So look out for that. Thanks for the, um, the plug opportunity. <laughs> Um, huh? <laughs> um. These comments are flying. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, let me let me let me try to catch one. Are all the races really money meets, or does everyone get same pay? Everyone does not get the same pay, but um, for the most part, you should be getting something. Um, there are some meets that we don't get paid for, but that's like one or two for the year. And it's like your local, um, like if I sign up for a meet here in Austin that um, I'm just doing like at the beginning of the season to kind of like Texas Relays, um, I don't get paid for that. But um, anything else that you see me run in, I get a check. Um. Yeah, Ashley, we still going, but um, <laughs> I'm about to wrap it up because your girl is going now. Yeah, right. I'm going to dinner. <laughs> um, Pierre, yeah, I would definitely love to get um, Felicia on here. My spirit sister. Mm. Did I see that Tiana was leaving? Good night, Tiana. Thanks for dropping by. Um, okay, I'm gonna scroll back up because these questions were going by really fast. Um, I think we've gone past the hour mark. So I'm gonna take two more questions and then I'm leaving you guys. Eden, thank you very much. Um, I've definitely thought about writing a book. I have a couple of book ideas. I just need to sit down and write it and slash find a ghostwriter to, to help me um, with that. Uh oh, my computer froze. Okay, let me see.
Seriously? You're going to freeze now? Okay. I got to wait for the questions to come up here. <laughs> Donald Johnson, your mama looks like me and she's always out. I can't. I can't. I need her spirit too then. Real runners of track and field reality show. I don't know if I'm reality TV material, but um, okay, let me find a question. Do you only have one gold spike? And if you do, how often do you take care of them? I have a few pairs of gold spikes. And actually one of them, the pair that I ran in the Olympic trials with are framed. Um, I have not framed the pair from Rio yet. Um, and then I have the pair that I ran in this season and then God willing, I'll make some more for next season. Um, okay. One more question. Uh Oh, this computer is still frozen. Love and hip hop Atlanta. Seriously. Wait, what? I gotta, I have to come back later and read these. <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys are funny. You used to think I was mean. Aw, I'm not mean. Um, okay, guys, I'm trying to find one last question. Something that I haven't answered already. So that's why I don't feel like I'm just going past your questions. I've, I've answered them before, whether it be on this tea time today or um, a past tea time. The storm has not hit here yet. <laughs> then, then some of these questions are just ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, guys. Um, Kenny Odai, you're going to have to go back to the beginning of this um, live stream to hear what happened with being pushed out of the zone. Let me scroll back down. A video on how many pairs of spikes I own. Do you guys really want to see that? Like for real, for real? I mean, I guess I can tell you I have a box full of spikes and the box is funky. <laughs> okay, I'll do a video on my spike collection. Um, but on that note, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and close it out here. <laughs> um, as usual, thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you guys for your questions. Thank you guys for your support. Um, like I said earlier, I really appreciate, I really, really do appreciate all of the love that I get from you guys on Twitter. Um, oh man, I just realized African wasn't here. What happened? Um, <laughs> and I, I, I have some ongoing, um, you know, relationships with you. I'm calling you guys teacups, but I'm gonna let you vote on what we're um, going to call this chat. So hit me up on Twitter with your nominations for your names, teacups, whatever. And um, if you're not subscribed, of course, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and there will be lots more to come on this channel. So as usual, thank you and peace. Now the awkward moment where I try to end